Today on the Bander Says Podcast, again, we will not be discussing any news because there is nothing interesting to talk about that affects content creators, but I will be answering a bunch of your questions again, including what kind of beanie do I wear, so go ahead and stick around. First things first, let's talk about what I've been testing, and as I have been on the last couple of episodes, I'm still using the Neumann TLM49 as my microphone, but I am running it into something slightly different. I am currently running it through an outboard preamp, which is the Golden Age Project's Pre-73 Mark III Vintage Preamplifier. I do not have a high pass. I do not have the air engaged. My gain is set to 55 dB, and my output is set at noon. So we're getting a good amount of coloration from the preamp, which is what I want. I want to hear what this preamp does to a microphone signal when you really dig into it and drive into it, which is which is what I'm doing. And then I'm running that into the Universal Audio X8. That's the signal path for today. You will see a review of this coming out on Tuesday. I have all my measurements done, all of the super fun stuff, and I have been playing with this for a while, but I have not had it on the podcast. And I figured, hey, what the hey? Why not throw it on the podcast? And that is what I have been testing. And now you know where we are going We are going to my favorite part of the show, the Ask Bandrew segment. And here we are. We are now sitting in the Ask Bandrew segment. I don't know why we're sitting here, but here we are. If you have any questions that you want answered, head over to askbandrew.com. There are instructions on how to send in audio, video, and text-based questions. Personally, I prefer the audio and video because then you don't have to listen to me read and I am because I'm terrible at reading. It's painful for all of us. And more importantly, we get to hear how you sound on your audio gear. And being that the majority of us are audio nerds, that's just a ton of fun. So send in the audio and video. Or if you are nervous or anything or anxious or shy, send in the text-based question and I will answer it. Again, ask bandrew.com. First email comes from Anthony and he says, hi there. I'd love to see a review of a universal audio 610 solo and see how it affects various different mics in terms of the color it can add to home recordings. Thanks so much and good health to you, Anthony. Anthony, thank you very much for the email. I do have plans to review the LA610 Mark II. That is not the UA610 solo. It does have the exact same, the identical preamp section. The difference is the LA610 has the optical compressor built into the channel strip, which is pulling inspiration from the LA2A, which is one of my personal favorite, if not my favorite compressor. So that is why I have the LA610 Mark II. I will eventually get around to reviewing it, but I need to work up to it. I'm not going to jump head first and make my first preamp review be the highest quality pre that I have. I want to start out with some lower end gear and put out the reviews and see what people, what kind of feedback people have, see what people think is missing from my reviews and how I can improve upon them. And then when I get around to the LA610, hopefully I'll be great at it. But guess what? I have it here. I'm going to do a quick sample of spoken words so you can hear what kind of coloration it can add at least to the TLM-49. I'm not going to sit here and spend 10 hours going back and forth between a bunch of different microphones for this podcast. This isn't the place for it, but here is a quick sample of that. Let's jump to that now. First up, I am on the Neumann TLM-49 running directly into the Universal Audio X8 audio interface. No unison pre's, no effects, none of that. My gain is set at 36 decibels. 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the tube preamp. Now I have the 49 running into the LA610 Mark II. I have my compressor bypassed. The gain is set to negative 10, so we should be getting as little tube saturation as possible. And then the level is set to 8. We are running line level into the Universal Audio X8, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, and here is how it sounds. 
Okay, this is me again on the Universal Audio X8 and the TLM49, no processing, nothing. I just want to give you a baseline so you can hear this again before we jump back to a more tube-saturated sound from the UA610. Okay, let's jump back to that. We're back on the 49, running into the LA610 again. Now the gain is set to zero, so this is right middle of the road. The level is set to 5.5 or so, and here is how this is sounding. You should be getting a little bit more coloration, and let's go ahead and jump back to direct into the interface, and then we'll do one more test with as much tube saturation as we can get. And for good measure, here we are on the TLM49 again, so you can hear how this sounds. Again, no processing, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, 36 dB of gain, about four inches off of the microphone, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Universal Audio LA610. And finally, we are on the TLM49, running into the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II, Again, the compressor is bypassed, the gain is set to plus 10, and my level is set to 2.5, and this is going to be the most tube saturation or tube color that you can get out of this preamp or this channel strip. I know you're saying the UA610 solo, so this would be as much coloration as you can get out of that solo preamp without any compression. And just because we can, because I have the LA610 Mark II, I've engaged the optical compressor and we're getting 6 dB of gain reduction and I just love optical compressors. So of course I'm going to throw it on and do a quick demo. Nothing else has changed, but hopefully that quick back and forth between direct into the interface and then running through the tube preamp was helpful for you and will show you the different characteristics. If you're listening to the audio only and you weren't able to get a good enough audio quality, try going to the YouTube channel because I don't compress that down to 128 kilobits per second. That should still be a WAV file that's uploaded. YouTube does all its goofiness to it, but it shouldn't be as degraded as it a 120 kilobits per second M4A. So there you go. Hopefully that was helpful. What is your name? I don't have this up. Anthony, best of luck to you. Hopefully that helped make your decision. Let's go ahead and jump to the next email. Next, we have an email from Tattoo or Tattoo. They say, hey man, I know you're a busy man, but just wanted to ask for an advice from you. I'm really torn between getting the TLM-103 and the OC-18 as of the moment. I'm upgrading from my belov beloved, I can't speak or read, my beloved Rode NT1, which I know you love too. But yeah, just really wanted to ask you as I believe you know more than most of the people will be using it mainly for recording vocals. Anyway, anyways, I hope you're doing alright. Just keep on creating great videos, brother. Brother. Take care. Tattoo, thank you very much for the email. I think I said that I already recorded some samples for you, and I appreciate that very much, and I do not know more than most people. I'm just a dope who spends all their time recording and screaming into microphones, and I have fun with it. So I will not feign any kind of superiority or <laughs> greater intelligence or knowledge over anybody else. I'm just a dope, but I do have the gear, so I will record a quick sample for you and share my thoughts and then let you hear what it sounds like and you can decide which one you prefer. There you go, let's jump to that now. Tattoo or Tattoo, I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Thank you very much for the email. You know me, I am not going to wax poetic about either of them. I'm just going to give you a quick demo. Currently, I am on the Neumann TLM-103. I am maybe three or four inches off. Like always, I am on the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is at 11 o'clock for this microphone. I will have to set my gain slightly different for the Austrian audio because that microphone is a bit quieter. I also know people will rage at me in the comments saying, I can't believe you're using the Focusrite on that. How dare you? What are you doing? Excuse me, coffee break. But it gives consistency and it's 
one of the more popular interfaces. So it gives the majority of people a better understanding of how the microphones will perform in their studio. That's why I use it. But this has been the TLM 103. Let me go ahead and jump over to the Austrian audio, and then we'll discuss a little bit more. And now I am on the Austrian Audio OC818. I know you are deciding between the TLM-103 and the OC-18. I don't have the OC-18, but it does have the exact same capsule in it, just one of the capsules, and it is a cardioid only. So I am on the cardioid polar pattern on the OC-818 or 81.8, whatever pisses people off more. What I hear is... The TLM-103 is not quite as smooth in the top end. I also don't think it's as balanced. That's a phrase I will use a lot. When I say balanced, I mean it doesn't sound overboosted in the top. It doesn't sound overboosted in the lows. It doesn't sound like a massive cut in the mids. It is a relatively neutral sound profile even though it does have a bit of boosting in the treble and air on both of these. I just think this is a more natural sounding microphone compared to the TLM-103. But as far as which one is going to be the better option for you or which one I think is generally better, that is really going to come down to personal preference. And I know people hate that because people want an exact answer. They want me to say, this microphone is better. Buy this one never buy this other one again. But it really does come down to personal preference. If you want that more natural sound, the OC818 is what you're looking at. If you want that more common or I guess more familiar kind of overboosted presence and treble and airiness than the TLM103. And if you have a smoother voice, then the TLM103 may work very well for you. But conversely, if you have a somewhat harsh voice that doesn't have much smoothness to it, the OC-18 may be the better option for you because it will do you a bit more favors, at least in my opinion. On my voice, I prefer the OC-818 over the TLM-103 because it does do me those favors and doesn't make me sound as harsh and terrible. There you go. Let's jump to the next email. I hope that helped. Let me know in the comments down below, tattoo or tattoo, what you ended up deciding on. And if you're still even looking at these two microphones and anybody and everybody else who is listening to this, let me know in the comments on YouTube which of the microphones you preferred, the Neumann, hello, Neumann, TLM-103 or the Austrian Audio OC-818. Next email. Next, we have an email from Rargenton. I apologize for mispronouncing that, and I apologize for popping my microphone. They say, I'm going to skip through a bit of this because it's kind of a long email, and we'll just get to the question. Given your expertise and how much I enjoy learning from you, I thought I'd write and explain my issue at the moment and wonder if you could help me. After watching all the videos I could find on the Zoom H5, I recently purchased one hoping it would be some sort of jack-of-all-trades for my needs. Um, a language teacher, but also a hobbyist musician. The idea was the Zoom H5 and its XY microphone when teaching online, but also when recording a tutorial video in the style of a vlog. However, in my experience, there's so much white noise when the gain is set anywhere above five that it makes zero latency monitoring really unpleasant, and the white noise is also present in the recording afterwards. Could you comment on that? Is this normal for this device? or perhaps an issue with my particular device. In addition, the same problem occurs when plugging in an XLR microphone for podcast style recording. I've tried it using the Samson Q2U, Rode NT1, and also a Shure SM7B with a Fethead. Thanks, Raphael. Raphael, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to call you Raph because I grew up on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I think that's an awesome name. Raph, thank you very much for the email. The Zoom H5 is known for having some of the noisier preamps out there. I have the Zoom H6, not the Zoom H5, and this is the H6N, is that what it is? I don't even remember the model number, but it does have very noisy preamps. That's to be expected. What's shocking is you're running into the preamp noise, the white noise, 
when you are using condenser microphones and when you're using microphones with a FET head. That does not sound right to me. That sounds like something is wrong. And I have one theory on what might be causing that. And it has to do with the gain setting for your microphones and the arming of channels that are not being used at the time you're recording. So I'm guessing you are down mixing everything to a stereo track, meaning all of the channels on your Zoom H5 are being down mixed to one file and recorded at the same time. The reason that's a problem is if you have your XY microphone attached to the top of the Zoom H5, and then you have channel one and two for your XLR microphones, and you don't turn the gain down on those two gain dials for the XLR microphones, and they're still armed, you're going to be capturing a bunch of preamp noise from those two channels. And it's going to be the worst case scenario because when you don't have anything connected to an XLR port, it assumes or it basically behaves as though you were recording a microphone with an impedance of infinity. So it is an absolute worst case scenario. Think of the worst microphone you could buy and that would be it. That's how the preamp is performing when nothing is connected. So by doing that and leaving the gain turned up, you are capturing preamp noise that is higher than any realistic situation. So I want to drive home the point. This is pure speculation that this is what's causing it because I don't know exactly what your setup is. But if you are capturing all your files, all of the channels at once, if they're all armed and the gain is turned up when nothing is connected to those XLR inputs, that's going to create a big issue in terms of preamp noise. And if you have all of the channels turned up, then it's going to compound on top of each other because you won't just have one preamp creating a heap ton of noise. You're going to have a second preamp creating a heap ton of noise as well. Now you should be expecting a little bit of preamp noise, even with condensers, especially with dynamics. If you aren't, if you don't have a fed head or anything, because as I mentioned, the preamps on zooms entry level stuff like the zoom H five, the zoom H six pretty rough pretty noisy, not the most powerful, but they are functional and the form factor of this is outstanding. It really is a functional piece of kit. And that would be my advice. That would be my expectation as to what's causing it. But without being there and seeing that specific H5 and the setup, all of that, I can't say for certain. If you have solved it, Reply in the comments on YouTube and let folks know what happened, what led to the issue, what was the problem, and if this solved it, let us know as well. Would love to know what solves it and, and what the, the base of the issue was. Thank you very much, Raf. I appreciate you. And next, we have a voice submission from Werner. Take it away, Werner. Hello, Andrew. I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the content that you are creating. Oh yeah, and sorry, my name is Van der Buchert. Um, I'm all the way from Poland, and probably as you can hear from my accent, I'm South African. Now let's not go into that. That's a long story. My question was initially going to be around a FET head and microphone combination. Now I understand what the FET head supposed to do, thanks again to your content, but I noticed that when I put the FET, FET head um, or I attach it to the microphone and then with a length of cable, attach the cable to my uh, interface, I would actually get some feedback noise. While when I attach the FET head to the interface and then run the cable to the microphone, I wouldn't get the noise. I suspect that that is probably because I'm using really crappy cables. So I'm trying to solve that. So I think that I might have answered my own question. I have a real question for you, though, and this is actually really serious. I think you've got a really solid beanie game going on. And uh, I must say that I have a problem. I either look like a dwarf or a smurf on drugs when I try and wear a beanie properly. What kind of beanies are you wearing and where do you get them and what is the brand? Because I think you've got a solid beanie game going on. Listen, once again, thank you so much for all the work that you do, the content you put out, 
it helps amateurs like me try and improve our audio. Appreciate you. Ciao. Werner or Werner, thank you very much for sending in that voice submission. A South African living in Poland. I'm sure that there's a joke there. I'm not funny enough to come up with it, and even if I could, I wouldn't say it because I am sure it is very offensive. But if somebody thinks of an unoffensive South African and Poland joke, then send in that joke in the comments, but only if it's unoffensive. You ask a very important question. What beanies do I wear? I'm going to drop a bombshell on you. I don't wear beanies. I used to wear beanies. I do not wear beanies anymore. That's the key. Now, I have a beanie right here. If you are listening, go ahead and jump over to the video. This is a beanie. This is my SoundSpeeds beanie, a limited edition, one of a kind SoundSpeeds beanie. You can tell that it is a relatively tall piece of headgear to keep your head warm. And if I were to wear this, it would go down over my eyes. Well, a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year, two years ago, I don't know. I started looking for made in the USA products. And while searching for made in the USA beanies, I stumbled across the hatwear, the headwear that I had always been searching for. It is called a watch cap. And what I wear are Rothko watch caps. They are much shorter in comparison to a beanie. So it does not cover your eyes. If I were to pull this all the way down, it goes right above my eyes. And these are designed for the military, I believe. I believe it's for the Navy, so when you are standing out doing watch in the evenings and your head is cold, you put this on and it doesn't go down over your eyes. It just covers the top of your head and your ears a little bit. And watch caps from Rothko, they are made in the U.S., at least the ones that I bought in 2020. That's not the best part. Let me share the best part with you. Typical beanies, 10, 15, 20 bucks, made in the USA watch caps perfect size under 10 bucks you can buy some of them for four bucks it's crazy now you know my secret i do not wear beanies i wear made in the usa rothko watch caps watch caps that is what you want to look for do not look for beanies unless you want to look like i don't know a skater from 2000 with your beanie pulled down over your eyes and or no no from can't hardly wait like it's the 90s and you keep cigarettes tucked up in there and you look like a a real wiener watch caps now you know my secret i will throw an affiliate link in the description i expect to sell 10 million of these rothko i know you probably make a killing no pun intended supplying these to the military if you want to do a limited edition collaboration (laughs) raw pot we could call it Podco or or Rothcastage. I don't know. We could we could come up with something and have a limited edition podcastage watch cap. We could call it Watchcastage. I don't know. It could be there's the the options are infinite, Rothco. I will throw the affiliate link down below. <laughs> I'm just rambling now. And lastly, we have a voice submission from Adam. Adam, take it away, good sir. Hey Braden. Um I'm in the field looking for a microphone for music voiceovers and podcasting potentially and like gaming commentaries because um i'm stuck between two handheld mics which is the sev7 and the sm58 from sure um i'm not too quite sure what one to choose i keep asking i've I've asked a few people but you know there's they've got biases and things so i was just wondering what you would suggest you know due to the fact the way my voice sounds right now my room is somewhat soundproof but that's just due to the furniture in the room and i do have a few foam pads but not a lot so i was just asking what you think would be best and keep up what you're doing dude i love your videos uh, i've just started to watch a podcast more frequently because obviously i just found out about the podcast even though i've been watching your channel for a while but you know better late than ever i guess and um, so yeah what do you think would be the best option for me in my current situation thanks andrew thank you very much by the way i know your name is adam i was just making a joke because you called me brandon and my name is not brandon so how does it feel andrew adam whatever your name is your question is <laughs> sorry your question is about which of the mics I would recommend, the Shure SM58 
or the SE Electronics V7. Like always, we will be doing a test, which is what I am doing at this exact moment. I currently have the SM58 running into my Focusrite 18i20 second gen. My gain is set at 4 o'clock, and I'm hitting around negative 12 to negative 9 dB, and I'm a couple inches off of this mic. Here is how it is sounding. Now let me jump to the SE Electronics SE V7. And here I am on the SE Electronics SE V7, and automatically you should be able to hear quite a distinct difference between the SM58 and the SE V7. To my ears, the V7 has a much more balanced, much more open sound. The 58 is a classic. It's a tone that almost everybody knows. But as far as the quality of the sound, I think 9 times out of 10, I would probably go with the SEV7. I just think the balanced sound, the openness in the top end, it doesn't sound congested. The low end is incredibly controlled. All around, I think this is a superior microphone. And that's not me denigrating the SM58. This is a 50-year-old microphone. The SEV7 is maybe 10 years old, max. This has a lot of new technology, a lot of new developmental processes that have been discovered over the last half a century. So I don't think it's saying the 58 is a bad microphone, given what it is, but I think the SEV7 is a superior microphone. Now, it is a super cardioid, I believe, so you will need to be careful with sounds coming in at 180 degrees and make sure to play off the polar pattern. But there you go. Between the SM58 and the SEV7, I would go the SEV7. Hopefully that helps. Andrew, Adam, whatever your name is. <laughs> All right. I think that's actually going to wrap up for this week. I'm just going to do the outro on the SEV7. I have nothing else to talk about, but I do have a couple of announcements. I did have a couple of guest spots last week. First, I was on Just Heather's, which is a podcast run by Heather, the host of Sunshine and Power Cuts. I will have a link to that in the description. Secondly, I was on the Taylor Guitars, what, what do they call it, the primetime show this last week to discuss large diaphragm condensers for recording acoustic guitar at home and general purpose recording as well. That was an absolute blast hanging out with Jay and Andy absolutely wonderful hosts and I will link that in the description as well and the last thing that I have I guess I put out a new video on Watchcastage well I put out three new videos on Watchcastage two of them were just unboxings kind of uninteresting unless you're interested in those specific watches but the one that I am kind of proud of pretty proud of is eight reasons why I stopped wearing a smartwatch and I had a little bit of fun with it, and hopefully you enjoy it. I will throw that in the description as well. And that is going to wrap up for this week. I put all the announcements at the end in case somebody doesn't care. So until next week, I will stop popping my microphones. Until next week, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have an amazing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Next Sunday, I will talk at you. Hopefully there's something interesting that happens in the world that I can discuss. But if not, I'll answer more questions. So thank you for sending them in. AskBandrew.com. I'll talk to you next week. I love you. Bye-bye. This has been a Geeks Rising production. Your executive producer is Bandrew Scott. For more information head over to www.geeksrising.com.